Hi, welcome to Traffic Inc. I'm Rich Mellon. Well, today is a very special day for me. Uh, it's all going to be all in the family. I'm here visiting with my son, Matthew, in, in central Alberta, and my two grandchildren, Sam and Madeline. They're coming out trapping. Right now, we're checking uh, coyote baits and, uh, and we're freshening them. And later on, we'll be going out to uh, a line out in the mountains that uh, Matt partners on. So, very exciting day. Very proud grandpa here. Stick with us. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do, and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. What are we looking for? Oh, you see him? Look what's in there. There's a coyote in there. Here. Stand right there. You see him, Cam? Yeah. Look at Look at him. Oh, wow. Yes. I love him. There we go. So, here, come over this way, Sammer. Come here, buddy. So, how we like to do things here is the, the power ram. And uh, you see why this coyote got hit right here and went and huddled up and died right there in the bush. Expert. So, really lethal way to do things and uh, not a bad looking coyote. They're starting to get a little bit rub on them late in the season here, but, uh, but I think he's a, a good light dog. So how many coyotes for you so far this year? Off this bait? Yeah. I think this is number 26 or number 27. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were outside of, uh, of Red Deer in Alberta, a city of well over 100,000. Uh, you can hear the, the vehicles uh, driving up and down the roads of Red Deer, and that's how many coyotes you've just taken here. Your best year for coyotes? Yep, I would say best on this bait for coyotes, yeah. And what, but what's, what's the total year, uh, uh, you know, big year for you? It would be 50. 50, 50 coyotes, coyotes, yeah. But we're just running the one bait this year, uh, just with young kids and, and work commitments and everything else like that. This is half a mile out behind my shop and we just jump on the snowmobile and either pull the kids on the toboggan or they ride with us and and well, we I, catch a coyote. Last year just about 40,000 it was 39,600 and some coyotes went to auction from Alberta. You can imagine what it would cost to control these animals if we didn't have trappers doing it for free. So when you see a, a a, uh, a bait out there or uh, or an animals animals in snares or traps leave them be somebody's uh, doing you a big favor trappers are the final def uh, final line of defense between the the wild and civilization okay well let's get them out of here yeah let's get them out here Sam why don't you guys go that way and I'll bust them out of the snare here and uh... let's go, let's go. <laughs> They're headed for the snowmobile. <laughs> they like to sit on the sled. Yeah. <laughs> so how many snares you got here? Uh, well, typically I don't run this many snares. Like I'll run eight to ten usually, but yeah. this year I got like fifteen. Just because it's your only bait. Just it's the only bait, and 
I like we got some snares are you know five six hundred yards away just where they travel to come in is good it's this little creek along here and it's yeah it's just been a good spot to get them so you catch them in their travel routes and you catch them on the bait and the farmers sure appreciate it they sure like us getting rid of the fox too yeah the fox come in the yards and they eat pets and they're full of fleas so yeah trapping inc is brought to you by Old Smokes Coffee, crafted coffee for the courageous. OldSmokesCoffee.com. Halford Hides, unique beyond compare. Visit us at our Edmonton store location or find us online at HalfordsMailOrder.com. Range Road Enterprises, professional solutions for the ATV and low impact logging operation. Find your nearest dealer online at range-road.ca. Argyle Motorsports and Marine. Visit our Edmonton store location or find us online at argylemotorsports.com. This snare, Sam and I had to dig out of this drift. I had it underneath that log there and I wasn't sure if I had an animal down in there or if I had a live snare. So I was a little bit wanting that mouth guard we talked about earlier when I was <laughs> chopping it out of there because I thought I was going to get schwanged in the face. And of course the boy is knee deep in there too so yeah the snare was still alive and so we just moved it into the bush there and usually this is a creek but it's all drifted in and you can see their tracks yeah. i see the snares down i don't know what's in it yet but uh but it looks like we made the right choice digging it out of the snowbank <laughs> <laughs> this drift is hard we're walking on top of it like nothing well we're probably on three feet of snow right now i know like i'm not kidding but oh it's right there yeah right right here oh so where was the snare set i literally had the snare leaning against this log and this is just uh a spot where they came down through and oh yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. didn't use nothing more than the uh so like for for people looking for spots to put their to put stuff you know the snares not i mean pay attention that that's not doesn't look like a, a traditional trail whatsoever does it but it was just, there was a few tracks coming through here and it was just tracks on top of the hard packed snow. Yeah. So, um, so Sam and I just, just put it in there and you can see that this is a good trail back here. Yeah. Um, that they used, but uh, a good catch, like, like this cable is, Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's not pulled that tight. So, so that was, that's about as good as it gets on them, I think. That's a pretty looking dog too. Yeah, not bad. Got some nice dark highlights on him. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That is a beauty. It's not it's not as light and pale as, as Southern Alberta or, or the Saskatchewan on that, but look at how heavy the coat is and Yeah, like I said, you see on their hips here it's I don't know what is it, the twenty fourth of January. Yeah. That's where you start, I find that I see, see him start to lose some furs on the hips, but... So season's just about done. Season's just about done, yeah. Up. Oh, yeah, look at him. Let's go through here. Is that ever a pale fox? Wow, is it ever, huh? Yeah. Um, all right. There's a... Nice pale fox. That's probably the palest fox I've caught here out here all year. It's like he's bleached. Yeah, the last one I caught pretty much just a couple feet over here was probably the darkest one I got all year. <laughs> no, but you one. get all reds. You don't get any crosses, do you? I haven't got a cross fox out here yet. Out on the big line there, we skinned that one last night that yeah. was uh, almost a cross. Like he had a black <laughs> chest on him. But, uh, but how many foxes have you taken out of here now in a couple years? Oh, probably 40, 40 fox now. The first year, we just trapped on the quarter section that we live on there. We got 26 fox out of a quarter section. And you know, how many fox do you ever see in a year? We see quite a bit around here. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's acreage land, right? So they're living under granaries. They're living under sheds, stuff like that. They live right in people's yards, pretty much. The foxes well, seem to. The part that amazes me with them is that, is that there you catch so many and you see so few you know you, you you're yeah just, you're unaware of how big the population is yeah i think i've seen one this fall out running around behind the shop and i was tempted to shoot him but i knew i'd get him in a snare so. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be worth more than a snare yeah absolutely so 
Well, that's a pretty good check. Yeah, not bad. Considering, you know? I mean, you've been, you've been staring off it all season. This makes how many now for the season? This will be 30 coyotes and probably half a dozen fox now. And we are literally one end of the uh, of a quarter section away from the back of uh, of his uh, um, machine shed, his shop. So I mean, it's been it's been an awesome uh, pickup for the for a whole year of snaring. Yep. Yeah, and you can see by the tracks here. I don't think we get 10% of the coyotes that come feed on this. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So good stuff, huh? How, how's how's coyote uh, snaring you guys? Good. Good. Yeah. Fun? How about you, Maddie? Fun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> And now for Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. I get asked a lot of questions about the knives that I use when it comes for uh, skinning and fur put up. And a lot of them are repurposed knives. You know, there used to be a hunting knife or there used to be a paring knife or, or whatever. I mean, some things, you know, when you're doing the ears or going around the, the eyes or whatever, it doesn't require a, much skill or specialty. When it comes to those opening cuts though, going across, uh, you know, from the heel down to the vent on a coyote or a lynx or a fish or whatever, I prefer what's called a furrier's knife. I'm told that's the proper term now. I was always taught to call it a parting knife. And the reason being was that once you got it underneath the skin, it just parted the fur and it works so effortlessly to go from the from the heel down to the anal vent because it's it's so straight uh, and and this angle here it once it's underneath the skin it wants to stand or there and and uh, ride down easily this is a, another style of furriers or parting knife and it has a rockered back on it and the reason being for that is to give you a little bit more clearance uh, with your hand to the leg of the animal once again though once you get it underneath it's easy to guide it and and uh, and op open it up I'm not going to say that you need to have these knives, not by any means. If you can do the job with the knife you got, then it's the right knife for the job. That was Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. Well, it'll take them a day or two to thaw. Probably three days in here. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. Tomorrow no. we're headed out to your registered trapper. Okay, so... A lot of people don't understand we have uh, resident licenses and registered licenses in Alberta. And a resident license is a trapper's license on private land that you have permission on. That's right, yeah. Okay, and in Alberta you have to have, uh, it ha you have to fill out paperwork for, for it as well. Uh, but when you go out to your registered line now, that's, that's out in, in the uh, forest, yep. on public land. Yep. And you've got a, a lot different um, species of fur in that, that that you can target up there. Exactly, that's your, I mean, you can get wolves on red, or, uh, resident lines here in Alberta, but for me, that's where I get my wolves, and then I get all my quota animals up there too, the lynx and the fisher, wolverine. Exactly. And uh, lynx, or sorry, I said lynx already, Martin. Yeah, yeah, so the resident trappers catch by far the most and the best um, coyotes. Uh, and muskrats. Yeah. And you do a lot of problem beaver work on your yes. resident lines. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't come across much beaver out on the registered line. Uh, no. Just the area that it is, right? Like we have a few creeks there, but it really doesn't seem to hold beaver. But then again, there isn't much for food for beaver out there. Yep. And, but around here, we sure, we sure get a lot. We probably do 30 to 50 beaver a year. And I don't know, it just depends on how many baits a guy wants to run, but probably same thing between 20 to 40, 50 coyotes, you know, 50 in a good year. I'll tell you one thing, the, the, the view is spectacular out on your line. Oh, I love it out there. I could, <laughs> I could be out there every day, yeah. <laughs> So what we got going on? Well, whoops. <laughs> I um, what I got here is a lynx pen. Uh, it's closed, but um, the foxes come and bugger with my lynx sets all the time, and they'll jump in here. And you see this bait stick is lick clean, and usually my snare will be down. Right. So I take and put some lynx lure that. Uh, that the uh, foxes like and I put them in the back of these 330 boxes and I catch foxes that way okay so 
it just kind of helps me get rid of the foxes or at least then they start to not want to screw with my cat pens. So, but what we got going on here was a, looks like a younger Martin. Looked like it was going to take a run at the old, <laughs> I got a piece of beaver meat hanging on the trigger there too. So oh, I yeah, see a couple exactly. bite marks in there and yeah, and he got a, I mean oh, yeah, that wasn't. Was, uh, all over in an instant there. Yeah, so. Pretty though, nice, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of dark ones out here, so. So that's the nice part there. Looks like we've had some luck again. Yeah, so again, just like we did down at the bottom of the mountain, it's a lynx pen that I've had, and I've had trouble with foxes on it. So here I've taken on the other side of the trail, I've taken and put another uh, fox box out. And for whatever this week, I've never caught a Martin in them before, but that's number two out of the three, <laughs> bo three boxes that we've checked. We're we're two for three on martin in them so well you know what i gotta take it and that's a nice martin man well, wow he, and he's untouched you know like that's what a guy would worry about having these sets on the ground right if something getting to him but just like i won't even touch him here but you could probably zoom in on his fur is just oh it's, it's spectacular it's just uh it's absolutely gorgeous so yeah so and and you know a, a guy would worry about an oversized trap like this not making a good catch but uh but I mean, there's in zone one right there on him. He's yep. dead. And I mean, you could see that that trap shot out of here and it lays right there, you know? Yeah. So. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, beauty. Nice little Martin here. Put it on uh, this whatever that was there, a little bit of a little bit of habitat, a little bit of sign for uh, Martin, and yeah, there was there was a fair amount of Martin tracks coming down here in the snow. And... I know. I think I almost need to put another box up here between that last one in here. So, but uh, we'll see how we do. We got one more check on the Martin here this year, and then uh, then yeah. I'm done on them. But, uh, but yeah, that's nice. So put it, when you have a nice big leaner log like that, that you can uh... got the beaver in its mouth. Oh, look at that! I was gonna, I thought, oh no, it's been damaged. No. Oh. It's just the beaver. Yeah, but you know, I don't think it has. I find one of the first things that the darn squirrels will do is they'll bite the tail off. Oh, really? Yeah, that, like, I'll catch them and they'll have the end of their tail is lopped off, but this one is not. And, uh, I mean, you can just tell by looking at his back. Oh, he's nice beautiful, he huh? Like another a juvenile. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like they're just starting to move again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by Old Smokes Coffee. Crafted coffee for the courageous. OldSmokesCoffee.com Argo. Go anywhere. Argo Extreme Terrain Vehicles conquer any terrain, any season. Find us online at ArgoXTV.com Hags Trapping Products. The most versatile trapping device on the market. Find our products and dealers online at j3o.com. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only fishing, hunting, and trapping magazine. Online at albertaoutdoorsman.ca. Well, we're up in the middle of uh, the end of your trail. The very last trap of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and if I was a betting man, this is the box I would have bet on. This has always been a good box. Yeah, I think it? this one's been on TV before. <laughs> but well. I think it was on a different tree. Yeah, well, geez, when I went up here to, to find my box this year, I was going nuts going. I couldn't find it, but the tree blew over, and the, the box is just laying in the ground over there. But uh, it's froze to the ground, so I put a new one up, and uh, this box has been up for three days. And <laughs> There you go. Let's look at that beauty. Yeah. Oh, nice. just immaculate. Yeah. And how soft is he? Oh, so soft, hey? Like just No, but I mean is he froze? Um, oh, you know what? No, he's not. No, he's not. I didn't think so. I watched his tail wiggle. Yeah. Yeah. His tail's frozen. But yeah, he's he they, we probably got him today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you probably pull him out and no no problems and Yeah, maybe. But I'll just I'll just sit, reset the trap all the same and Yep, get grab another one. And I gotta grab some bait there too. Oh, was the bait cleaned out? Yeah. Oh, so, so another one was here. Maybe. Well, these didn't thaw a lot today, but <laughs> no. we, we sure picked up some nice Martin. Yeah, the Martin looked great. You said you've had a tough year out there. 
It's been it, it's been a tough uh, December and January for sure. Yeah, I mean, we picked up a dozen Martin right away, and uh, and then it was just all links out there for me. So, like, I got one one Martin in a month out there. Well, so, I mean, the, those apex predators, though, they can sure be hard on everything. Eats Martin. Yeah, you know, Fisher eat Martin, Lynx eat yeah. Martin, everything does. Yeah, so. So we finished off the lynx quota pretty quick. We we're only allowed five out there, so my lynx quota was open and closed real fast. And uh, so then it's just been Martin and wolves, and wolves are, you don't bet on wolves, that's for sure. They come and go, and Martin it's, pay the bills, so. It's interesting though that uh, we found a lot of wolf scat and, uh, and they're eating horses. Yep, for sure they're eating horses. I've always wondered about that, and uh, I would say that's confirmed now that they are hunting out there. Well there's a lot of feral horses, uh, uh, this is uh, near Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, and there's a lot of feral horses out there and there's always an argument about whether they're feral horses or wild horses and truth, truth is they're feral, they're just somebody else's garbage. And the biggest problem with, with horses, uh, feral horses out in the landscape, is horses eat the best food first and they outcompete the elk, the deer, moose, everything. And so Wolves have never utilized them much, but now uh, all the scat we found today, there was horse hair in, in all of it. So Yeah, that one pack of wolves is pretty big, so I'm wondering if if the, the horses are contributing that, the, you know, they knock down a horse that's got to be about two moose worth of meat. That, and you said that, they, you know, you used to see big packs of horses out there, and now you're yeah. not. No, they seem to be fractured. Earlier in the year, they seem to be in big herds, and now, like, how many we've seen a couple of horses yep. here and there today. Yeah. But they sure work the ground, like the, that pipeline. Yeah. They worked it for probably a mile and a half of yeah. digging it up. So. Well, I want to thank you. It's been yeah. absolutely awesome, and I get to see my grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see Grandpa. That's for sure. <laughs> and and it's fun to be able to go from. From the uh, the coyotes on the on the prairies to the martins in the mountains. Yeah, there's it's it's one contrast to the other for sure. Well, sure hope you people have enjoyed your time with us today, and we'll maybe see you out on the line. You can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites.